the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In the waters of baptism, Elaine died with Christ, and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory.
up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that, by the grace of your mercy, you may command the name of your servant Elaine to be inscribed in the Book of Life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. from the 
the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he led me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me in the center of the plain, which was now filled with bones. He made me walk among the bones in every direction, so that I saw how many there were on the surface of the plain. How dry they were. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones come to life? I answered, Lord God, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophecy over these bones, and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, See, I will bring spirit into you, that you may come to life. I will put sinews upon you, and make flesh grow over you, cover you with skin, and put spirit in you, so that you may come to life, and know that I am the Lord. <laughs> I, Ezekiel, prophesied as I had been told, and even as I, as I was prophesying, I heard a noise. It was a rattling as the bones came together, bone joining the bone. I saw the sinews and the flesh come upon them, and skin covered them, but there was no spirit in them. Then the Lord said to me, Prophecy to the Spirit, prophecy, Son of Man, and say to the Spirit, Thus says the Lord God, From the four winds come, O Spirit, and breathe into these slain that they may come to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> the psalm can be found in your missalettes, number 274, on Eagle's Wing.
reading from the letter of, the, of Paul to the Romans. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption, through which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If only we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now, and not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, the word of the Lord. Him. He asked them, 
What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described. But him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are. How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther, but they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Our bones may be dry because it seems as though some of the life has been sucked out of them over the course of the past few days. But there haven't been too many dry eyes. The other day when I met with Tom and Tom and Elaine's children, 
Tom shared with me the readings that he had chosen for today's funeral liturgy, and his children put their stamp of, of approval on those readings, the readings that we just heard proclaimed. And Tom told me that he chose those readings because each of them says something about Elaine. The first reading reminds us that Elaine was someone who tried to bring life to everything that she did and to everyone that she met. The responsorial psalm spoke of Elaine's great trust in God's providential care. The second reading, taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, spoke of the struggles and the sufferings of this life. And certainly, within recent years, with all of her physical ailments, there was a great deal that Elaine suffered. But her vision, her sight, was fixed on the glory to come. And finally, the Gospel text speaks to us of the risen Christ's appearance to the disciples on the road to Emmaus and his being revealed to them in the breaking of the bread, certainly speaking of Elaine's great love for the Eucharist and how important this family of faith was to her. Each of these readings says something about Elaine. But over the course of the past few days, as I've been praying with these readings, I'm not so sure that the readings are meant to speak to us about Elaine as much as the readings are supposed to speak to us of what Elaine would want to say to us today. Of what she would want to say to us as we gather here to celebrate her life to remember the wondrous depth of her love and to look forward to the future with the same sense of hope that enabled her to put her trust in God. I think the readings really say more about what Elaine would want to say to us. Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. If you happen to be at the closing of last night's visitation hours, you may have had the opportunity to hear Elaine's daughter, Teresa, offer her reflections and the reflections that her siblings put together on their mother's life and the six major lessons that Elaine taught them to read in order to expand one's mind and to go out and explore the world. To listen, because it's so important if we're going to understand other people that we listen well, and not just with our ears, but with our heart. <clears throat> Thirdly, to listen without making judgments, because Elaine was so accepting of the people who entered into her life, the people that she welcomed in to her embrace. Elaine taught her children how to be good parents. Teresa said good mothers. What good parents? Because Elaine cared for so many, not just her own children, but her vast extended family that included all of us in some way or another. Of what Elaine taught them, about marriage, about the witness of Tom and Elaine together in the sacrament that they share, and finally about Elaine's great faith and how important it is for us to have faith in God. And I think especially in moments like this, that we have faith in God and place our hope in that which is undone. So what do these readings have to say to us? What is it that Elaine would want us to hear this afternoon when she's inviting us with our dry bones to listen to the word of the Lord, to listen, to hear
hear God's voice in this moment. In that reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel that we heard proclaimed, the prophet is taken by God out into this vast field of dry bones. And God says, can life come from these bones? That field of bones does not represent those who have gone before us in faith, who are awaiting the resurrection at the end of time. Those bones, later on in the reading we are told, represent the community of faith that is very much alive, at least physically, but struggling in what they are facing in the present moment. <laughs> the community to which Ezekiel was speaking was the community of the exile, a people that had been torn away from their homes, where families had been divided, where their future seemed to be without hope. So much so that at one point when this vast army that has been brought back to physical life stands before God and the prophet, the army says, our bones are dry, our hope is gone, and our future has been cut off. And I can see how it might feel that way today. As Tom and I exited the parish center the other day after meeting, he said to me, you know, it hurts. But it only hurts because the love was so deep. We do not hurt, we do not mourn, we do not feel the loss of something that we do not love. And so, yes, we gather together today in sorrow, feeling the loss, not avoiding the hurt. But Elaine would want us to recognize the hope that life still presents to us. Because the dry bones were brought back to life. The Spirit of God was instilled in them. And the future began to open up. And that's all because of love. Our physical lives may come to an end, but not even death can separate us from love. The love that we have for Elaine and the love that she has for us continues to live on. As we will hear later on in the liturgy, for us who believe in death, life is change, not end. And we trust that she lives on. And if anything, I think Elaine would want us to live on. To live on in the love that she had for us. And to trust in that love. That that is still needed. And that her love for us continues to bind her to us as we are bound to her, each in our own different ways. As husband, as children, as grandchildren, as sisters, as brothers, as family, as friends, as members of this faith community. <clears throat> Death cannot put an end to the love that continues to bind us together in Christ. Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. In that second reading, St. Paul tells us that those who are struggling and suffering with life as it is, and we may be finding ourselves right now struggling and suffering because of the hurt and the loss. St. Paul reminds us that this is nothing compared to what awaits us. This is nothing that compares to what awaits us. And I think Elaine would want us to remember that our relationship with her is not ending. That we as believers trust that one day we will be reunited with all those who have loved us in this life and all those whom we have loved. There is a 
glory that we are still awaiting and that we need to place our hope and our trust in. There will always be a sense of emptiness, a hole in our hearts. But every time we feel that sense of emptiness, that hole that is there, we can also trust that the Lord and the Lamb who loved Him will be near to us in a new way, in a new way. And I think Elaine would also want us to remember that we can find the hope and the peace in the future because of how we live in the present moment. The stories of Jesus in which we have placed our faith so oftentimes occur around the table. And there were two tables in Elaine's life that were so very, very important to her. The kitchen table, or the dining room table at home, and this table right here. It was in the breaking of the bread that Jesus revealed himself to his disciples and gave them new hope when it seemed as though their lives and their futures were coming to an end. So oftentimes I know, because I had sat at that table in your home, that it was at that table where Elaine brought joy and life and hope and peace to so many. <laughs> Because of her hospitality, because of her wisdom, because of her willingness to share her cells with us. That table was so very important to her. And that's a part of the legacy that she's left to us. To remember how important it is for us to gather around the table as family. And to find new life and hope and peace but also to gather around this table. Where here, too, in the breaking of the bread, the presence of the risen Christ is revealed to us and shared with us so freely. That's why we come together here today to say thank you to God for the gift that Elaine has been to our lives, and especially to her family. We gather here today to call upon the risen Lord to reveal himself to us in the breaking of the bread that Elaine put so much faith and trust in, that here we might find some sense of peace and consolation and know that our God is with us. That our God continues to bring us to life. That here love is revealed in a very unique way. And here the love that Elaine had for the Lord and for this family of faith will also continue to be revealed. When I spoke with Tom on the phone after having heard of Elaine's death, and he was telling me what the scripture readings were going to be for the day. He said, we're going to use Psalm 91 as the responsorial psalm, which we sang as on eagle's wings. He said, there's a special story behind that. He said, I'll tell you sometime. <laughs> and so when I gathered with Tom and his kids on Wednesday afternoon, I said to him, so what's the story? What's so special about Psalm 91? And he said, you know, when I was thinking about going into the diaconate, I wasn't sure if I should do that or not. I wasn't sure if this was the right thing to do. He said Elaine was sure. <laughs> and in fact, she wasn't surprised when Tom told her that he was thinking about this vocation and ministry in the church. And so when he expressed his uncertainness, Elaine said to him, why don't you go on retreat? Why don't you take a couple of days, go off to the Christian Life Center, spend some time in prayer? I 
he gathers Elaine listening to the voice of the Lord <coughs> and offering wisdom and guidance to someone who she loved deeply. And someone that she knew God would end up sharing with so many others. When Tom arrived at the Christian Life Center and opened up his Bible, he found a note for Elaine. And he's carried this note in his Bible and his bravery all these years. And he shared this with me the other day. And I want to share it with you. And I don't want you to hear this, but rather to listen to the ears of your heart. And to hear this not just as a note to Tom, but in some way as a note to all of us in this moment. Hi, honey. Hope you're having a great weekend. Remember, I love you. The kids love you. But most of all, God loves you. Hear your mom's voice, your grandmother's voice, your sister's voice, your friend's voice, your fellow parishioner's voice say, I love you. Remember, I love you. But most of all, God loves you. You have been a super dad, and I think, a great husband. <laughs> I don't think there was any sense of hesitation. <laughs> so I think we're all pretty lucky. I pray for you daily and love you more every day. Again, hear Elaine's voice saying that to all of us. I pray for you daily and I love you more every day. Take care, and see you Sunday, the day of the resurrection. Elaine. P.S. I was reading the Bible just before you left, and I found this. And on the other side of her note, she wrote out some of the verses from Psalm 91. A psalm that calls us to place our trust in a good and loving God. And verse 15, which was one of the seven of many psalms, or many verses from Psalm 91 that she wrote on the back of the snow, reads this. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. I will deliver him and glorify him. Death cannot put an end to all. It cannot destroy the bonds that have drawn us together in life. That bond of love will continue, and you will know it. You will experience the miracle of love even now from your mom, from your wife, from your grandmother, from your sister, from your friend. Do not hesitate to pray not just for you, but to pray to her. To continue to ask her for her help as you did in this life. Continue to ask her for inspiration. Listen for her voice, for her presence in the small things in your lives. Death cannot put an end to the bond of love. She will continue to touch your life. The Lord will make sure of that. So call upon her and trust that she will answer you in the goodness of God's law and God's providential care for you. Our bones may be feeling dry right now and our eyes may not be. But the love that we have for her and the love that Elaine has had for each and every one of us continues to live on. Tom, 
Teresa, and Tom, and Mary, and Beth, and Joe, thank you for sharing your life, your mom, with us. She was a woman of great grace. She was a woman of God. And our lives have been touched by hers and enriched with her life. Her love will continue to live on, especially in all of you. Beloved brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. We join our prayers to him. In baptism, Elaine receives the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Our sister Elaine was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home in your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love, and gather them, excuse me, gather them into the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Elaine, seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from grief. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our we are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Elaine. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let the church receive. The offertorium can be found in your missile Number 278. Be not afraid.
and earth may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord Grant that she who was united with your son in the death like his 
may you also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who has blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
For the Catholics who are prepared to receive our Lord in Holy Communion, there will be two stations at the top of the aisle, one on either side of the casket. So when the uh, priest and the deacon or the priests take their places, you can come up in the main aisle and go back by the side. The communion hymn is found in the Missalette, number 314. I am the bread of life.
We pray, Almighty God, that your servant Elaine, who has journeyed from this world, may by the sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. I wanted to, uh, on behalf of the parish, extend my sympathies to uh, Elaine's family. And um, I'm very impressed with the turnout. I, 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 believe me, I, I'm not surprised. It's, it's a very good sign uh, to assist the time of the death. It's considered to be a work of mercy. So continue to pray for each other. And, and pray for our beloved deceased. Pray for all families who have lost loved ones. And finally, uh, immediately after the Mass uh, this afternoon, um, there will be a luncheon in the Paris Center. Uh, the burial does not follow the Mass. That will be uh, sometime uh, later. Uh, so right after Mass, if you're able to come to the luncheon, it's in our Paris Center. Let us pray with confidence to God in whose sight all creation lives, that he will raise up in holiness and power the mortal body of our sister and command her soul to be numbered among the blessed. May God grant her a merciful judgment, deliverance from death and pardon of sin. May Christ the Good Shepherd carry her home to be at peace with the Father. May she rejoice forever in the presence of the eternal King and in the company of all the saints. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant not to her, O Lord, and let perpetual life shine upon her. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Elaine, your servant, in the sight of this world. She is now dead in your sight. May she live forever. Forgive whatever sin she committed through human weakness and in your goodness grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. The recession is number 298 in the Missile How great the battle.